to bring in now Liberal Senator Chris Back, who had some and probably does still have concerns about this policy. He joins me uh, from Perth this evening. Uh, Chris Back, thank you for your uh, time. I first want to ask you, do you think there was a backlash in, in WA? Well, there wasn't, uh, Laura, as it happened. Uh, there were concerns expressed, of course, but uh, in uh, the 2013 election, the two party preferred in our favour was 58%, yep. uh, and in 2016 it was 55%. So uh, there were concerns expressed. Uh, we obviously lost one senator, my good colleague, Senator David Johnson. Yep. But I think it's fair to say that uh, we did not see evidence uh, of the downturn as a result of it here in WA. So what do you, are you pushing for the government and the Treasurer to do with superannuation policy? Because you did have concerns about it. Do you now concede that the government has a mandate uh, for this? It's been taken to an election and quite frankly you need the revenue. Well, the beauty on our side is that we can have these robust discussions, and I'm in the midst of that discussion with the Treasurer uh, at the moment, as I have indeed done with the Finance Minister. Uh, so so that's, one of the, that's one of the delightful aspects. Uh, I haven't finished that discussion with Scott Morrison as yet, but um, to date uh, I certainly have been pleased by his engagement. Mm -hmm. We haven't yet finished uh, where we need to be. He uh, obviously expresses to me the fact that we do have to make savings, and of course we do, but at the same time I want to make sure uh, that first of all they are fair, and secondly I want to make sure that as we are with the Liberal Party, we do ensure that people have sufficient in their retirement uh, with what they've accumulated to be able to live on. And of course, he makes the point to me that the $1.6 million per person, yep. uh, $3.2 million per couple, uh, is fair and equitable. Uh, I've put some alternative views to him, and he's considering those. Mm -hmm. And I and expect. What are uh, those, Senator? What are well, those alternative uh, views? <coughs> Well, uh, particularly the situation of, for example, somebody who uh, may have invested heavily in one type of stock or share, BHP Billiton, forming up to their 1.6 million. Uh, needless to say, as in BHP's case, you know, the dam wall uh, burst in Brazil, their share price has gone down. Uh, to what extent uh, should that person still be able to ensure they've got sufficient funds in their retirement? Uh, another one. Uh, a case that I put publicly is the, the fellow that, uh, that, that perhaps loses his wife a period of time later uh, into another relationship. The new relationship, there are children still at school, need sure. support. Uh, Senator, I, absolutely. I've seen some of these suggestions you've put forward, but uh, what you're saying to me is those not asking for widespread change here, it is actually what the Treasurer has described as those unintended consequences and making sure that people don't slip through uh, the gap here. But what is being discussed is uh, changing this cap, the limit of the lifetime non-concessional cap from $500,000 to $750,000. Now, are you pushing for that? Correct. Well, I think it's a good move in that direction. Uh, to be perfectly okay, sure. honest with you... Uh, sorry, I'll just pull you up there, but it would cost $300 million over the forward estimates. Where would that revenue come from? How would you, you know, make it's it an up? It's an interesting question because there's two sets of figures out there. There's Treasury's figures and there are the Parliamentary Budget Office figures. So I'm not yet convinced about that $300 million figure that you do quote. So that's another area that I need to be satisfied with from Scott and his staff before I reach a resolution on it. But the other one that I continue uh, to discuss with him uh, is whether or not a figure back to 2007 uh, is in fact retrospective or not. And we're, we're in the midst of that discussion okay. at the moment. And okay. to, I, fair to say that yeah. we haven't yet arrived at a landing. No, fair enough, fair enough. And it is a discussion behind closed doors. But what you're saying to me is no matter what, you want to see changes that would mean a loss in revenue. And Senator, to be fair, I still haven't seen suggestions from you or any of your other fellow backbenchers suggesting how you might make that revenue up. Well, you have seen suggestions from me in the Senate, uh, and those were the scheme that I suggested earlier before the election, uh, and that was to allow people uh, who in their mid-20s to mid-30s may now have a help debt to be allowed to use some funds from their superannuation to pay that off, or indeed, 
uh, people who avoided the opportunity at the end of school to get a university degree to actually dig into those funds to fund either a higher degree or a degree in their mid-20s to mid-30s. So I did present okay. to the Treasurer yes. and to the Parliament a very, very good suggestion for funds to be saved. But it wasn't taken to the election as a, a policy and you, as many as everyone else in that Parliament knows, that there are political realities here and you know, the savings aren't are hard. There's no low hanging fruit at the moment. So, how willing are you to dig your heels in over this? Because this would seem like one of the easier uh, policies to get through the Parliament, through the Senate, and it doesn't bode well for some of the uh, more difficult ones the government's going to try and push through throughout the 45th Parliament. Let's be very blunt. In 2013, leading up to that election, Labor said if they won government, they would introduce $5 billion worth of savings. And we said, yep, that's a good idea. We would support you if you won. We won. We put the $5 billion of savings in. And three times during the last parliament, Labor said, no, we're not going to support those. We said, hang on, they were your savings. Now, come to forward to 2016, Scott and Matthias Cormann are saying exactly the same thing again to Bill Shorten. During the election campaign, you committed to join us in those savings. This is the end of this phase. Mm. Not only Australia, but the world economy now is facing some very, very black, dark skies. United States, Europe, sure. Japan, China, Switzerland. It is time to stop the nonsense, both for the Labor Party and for the crossbenchers, and to realise the predicament we are in, and we have got to contain our debt and our deficit, Laura. The reason is this. We are borrowing $1.2 billion a month at the moment, not to repay the debt, yeah. but to pay the interest on the debt, forty million dollars a day. Absolutely, so and that's why. Too much but, but, but isn't that why this superannuation uh, policy was one of the key fairness measures in the election campaign? This is why uh, the government was able to prosecute and and call for a cut in company tax because this was seen uh, to you know be a, a fairness measure to be looking at higher income earners. I mean, let's be honest; those with, that, that can afford to put an extra five hundred thousand dollars in their super. All the government is asking them to do, if they want to go beyond that, is pay 15% tax. I just don't see why that's not fair. Well, they have paid 15% on the way in, don't forget, Laura. Mm. They paid 15% on the way in. Okay, and Scott makes a very good point, and you're count... making it also. Yeah, well, and uh, that is that yeah, sorry, superannuation go. is not supposed to be a wealth creation activity. It's supposed to be there for your retirement. I accept that. But the other thing we've got to make sure, too, it has long been the policy of our party to make sure that people who want to be self-sufficient in retirement can be. Mm. And one of the points I'm putting to Scott, and he's answering them eloquently, but that is we want to make sure we don't drive people down to be reliant on the pension. And that, of course, is the challenge uh, that we have got. It certainly is. Senator Chris Back, it's a tough one for you and the government indeed. Thank you so much for your time. It'll be a good challenge. Thanks very much, Laura.